here again. I am Noga, I'm an engineering manager at Figma working on dev mode. Really excited to be here with you. One thing we always say at Figma is when you see something that needs doing, do it. Take initiative, be bold, tackle exciting challenges like Figma's future depends on it. Because it does. Figma's success is built on every single one of us never treating a problem like it's someone else's. We call it running with it. And to be completely honest, I am not much of a runner myself in real life. In fact, I almost failed high school just because how bad I was in running. But despite all that, I do believe this value has a big part in Figma's success. And at Figma, everyone are running with it. Sales, marketing, recruiting, product support. Our best innovations come from individual contributors going outside the scope of their role and solving a problem they see. And I think the talk we just heard from Mihika is a great example of that. Today, I want to focus on product teams and specifically how design and engineering, running with it together, side by side, is such an important part of how we build products at Figma. We like to think of it not as a relay race, where each person ends their role before handing it over to the next person. We prefer to think of it as more of like a running club, all going out together for a long run and keeping up a constant pace throughout the run. I want to go into some concrete examples of how our team at Figma is running with it on a daily basis and also call out some of our own favorite Figma features. So throughout the life cycle of a project, as we're working on a user problem, the level of conviction we have in our solution grows. As we're getting a better understanding of the problem, exploring different solutions, diverging, converging, testing, validating, until we're finally ready to ship. And during that process, the quality of our design artifacts increases, starting from low fidelity designs up to very detailed specs. The same thing happens to engineering. We're starting with some pretty hacky code, going all the way up to well-tested software. And what we try to do is to make this progress in design and engineering hand in hand. It's not a linear process. Sometimes engineering is ahead and sometimes it's behind. But in the long run, we try to keep the same pace and not get out of sync. So let's see what that looks like in different phases of the project, starting with early on. Taking big ideas to production is a huge undertaking and is also hard to walk back. We wouldn't want to ship anything to our users if we are not sure that it's the right thing for them and if it's not meeting our quality bar. However, a prototype has far less implications and is often an impactful way to get internal alignment. By shifting our focus from production to prototyping, we can bypass a lot of constraints and our team can make decisions quicker. Figma's prototyping tool makes it easy to build and share no-code interactive prototypes. Prototyping brings product to life and reveals interactions that are sometimes just hard to convey with just still designs. Rapid experiments with prototypes enables our team to generate and validate multiple ideas quickly without requiring additional development cycles. These proof of concepts also help sell ideas upwards more quickly, saving time for the team and for stakeholders. And sometimes we want a prototype in code. Prototyping in code allows us to figure out hard technical details without being blocked by design. In this example here, you see a prototype from Roshan Bala, an engineer on our team. When we were building the annotations feature in dev mode, we had a lot of it to figure out, and we had to do a lot of iterations. There are so many interactions at play, like zooming, panning, scaling, minimizing, hovering. 
In this early end-to-end -end demo from Roshan, we started to see the vision come to life. As you might notice, this is not the final UI we shipped with, but we were able to make all this progress without being blocked by designs and long before specs were finalized. You can see more examples and learn more about how we built the annotations feature in dev mode in this blog post written by Oscar Nielsen, a designer on our team. If you want to try and do more prototyping in code with your team, these are some tips that I found really useful to just make sure that everyone are aligned and everyone's time is being put to good use. The first thing you want to align is on is what are we hoping to learn? Are we hoping to text test the technical visibility of something? Do we want to test an interaction? Is it something else? And also, what's our confidence level? Or in other words, how likely are we to throw this away at the end of the day? When working on prototypes, generated code is a really great jumping start point. You don't have to start from scratch every time, which is especially valuable when you're trying to build something quick. After building a prototype, we try it ourselves, we, we share it with our stakeholders, and maybe even share it with users in a research session. The feedback we get is how we know if we're on the right track or if we need to course correct. We try to do that and ask for early feedback in all phases of the project, and here are some examples. When an exciting PR just landed, we want everyone on the team to check it out. Sometimes we just record a quick video, like we've seen Ro Roshan do in the previous example, and share it on Slack. But a really useful internal tool we have at Figma is front-end commit previews that allows us to share in-progress work without even, even waiting for the code to get deployed. This is also useful as a tool for designers to check in on progress and stay in sync. We have, a Slack we have a Slack channel that pings our team whenever a new PR has landed. And designers often go there, open the front end commit preview to test out things. Catching small UI tweaks when they're fresh from the oven makes them a lot easier to address. And this saves us a lot of visual QA time later in the process. We also have a weekly show and tell session with our team where designers, developers, and everyone else on the team share their weekly progress. Beyond seeing where the product is at and sharing feedback, this is also a great time for knowledge sharing and building context. While these are just quick demos and not long tech talks or design crits, quickly hearing about how a feature got implemented or what went into a design decision rather than just seeing the final results helps the entire team build context and an understanding of trade-offs. And finally, at Figma, we're lucky to be our own product users, which means dog fooding or testing out our new features before they ship is a big part of our product culture. Using feature flags and depending on the maturity of the project, we can enable new features for either just our team, our stakeholders, or the entire company. We always encourage everyone to share feedback, the more the better. And the feedback we get internally is always useful, but it's also never enough. We always keep in mind that our usage patterns as Figmates does not represent the entire, uh, our, the entire spectrum of our user base. So we will all also always validate our decisions externally. So adopting this way of working of design and development, building conviction together, means that handoff couldn't be further from one and done. Throughout the life cycle of a project, there are dozens of handoff moments when our team decides that something needs to be built. And even when we agree to build something, we spec it out, we mark it as ready for dev, these designs often changed based on feedback we get, based on an idea an engineer had, or just a decision to cut something out of scope. Even with best intentions and with everyone on the team recognizing that the importance of iterations, it can be so frustrating, frustrating to spend your day fighting CSS to implement a tricky component, only to uh, find out hours later that the design has changed and all your work has gone to waste. And that's exactly why we build the new dev mode features that we shipped last week. 
Marking Ready for Dev has been around for a while. If you're not familiar, it allows designers to quickly label a section or a frame as ready for dev without creating a separate page or file. This is a very lightweight action that helps the team all be in sync on what design we actually want to build. As of last week, we introduced a new home for everything that's ready for dev in a file. This is a useful entry point for developers to land in, find what they're looking for, and see if anything changed. When a designer makes a change to a ready frame, the ready for dev indicator will turn yellow. And when they're done making edits, they can let the rest of the team know by adding contextual notes and marking it ready again. The team all gets a Slack notification, letting them know that the design has been updated, and they can go to the file to compare changes and see exactly what changed. The new completed status also allows us to close that loop and keep track of what's been implemented. We also now have a new focused inspection experience that hides everything else on the canvas and lets you see just what you want to build. All these new features allow our team to move fast while staying aligned. Speed and efficiency also come from everyone having the necessary context and being empowered to make decisions. When team members understand the broader picture, they can make informed decisions and trade-offs quickly. One advantage of recent years and transitioning to a more remote and virtual world is that not just the sales or research teams get to meet our users, and we don't have to wait for a once-a-year conference like this one to see our users' faces. Our team regularly joins research sessions and read feedback sent us directly from users, as you can all submit now in this feedback link from our new Ready for the View. And having that strong understanding of what's important to our users empowers each and every one of the teammates to make trade-offs independently and move fast without being blocked on a product manager to make any decision. Comments are a useful feature to use for everyone to suggest ideas and give their feedback. Anyone with any seat or any permission level on a file can leave a comment, and everyone else on a file can see it and respond back. Engineers on our team often have ideas for things they'd like to see on a product, being front-end developers, building a product for front-end developers means we have a lot of opinions. And oftentimes, the easiest way for a developer to suggest an idea is just to build it. So here's one example for something that often happens in our team. Here, Martin, an engineer on our team, felt the need to have an alphabetical sort in order in the new Ready for Dev page. Martin just ran with it, implemented the solution, and shared it with the team. After trying it for a while, we decided to keep it, and it's in the product today. There are also times when these ideas get built, but then reverted. But when the cost for building is low, it's a really useful way to get your idea across, as, as long as it's not a one-way door. A time of year when this goes even further is Maker Week that you also heard from Ihika about. Once a year, Figmates are invited to pause their day-to-day -day work and join a cross-functional hackathon, which is an opportunity for anyone to decide what they want to work on. Since 2018, Figma hosted 10 Maker Weeks, and a hundred of projects came out of these. Many of them ended up shipping externally, like music and fig jam, design system analytics, and most recently, slides. And if you're noticing a pattern here, yes, it's probably wise to keep an eye out for any idea Mihika will be pitching in our upcoming Maker Week in August. So after we prototyped, shared, got feedback, iterated, pivoted, did some do dog fooding, ideally, we're feeling good about our solution, and we're almost ready to ship. Just almost because Figma has a very high quality bar. Professional product teams, like yours, use our tool every day, all day, to make great work. Even small paper cuts that don't seem that bad in isolation, like a menu that opens too slow or a confusing message, can 
sorry, can grow into a much bigger frustration when repeated a hundred times a day. Here are some ways that our designers and developers collaborate to get our features ready for launch. So at Figma, we don't have dedicated QA uh, people on every team. So developers and designers own the responsibility to make sure that our features are ready to be shipped. One common practice in our team is a bug bash, a time when the entire team gets together to try and break our product. And these bug bashes take different forms depending on the feature we're testing. Sometimes they're very well structured if we want to make sure we're covering all edge cases that have to do with permissions or security. And sometimes they are a lot more free form if we want to just see how different features interact together and see what could go wrong. Pair programming is also a pretty common practice, but what about design and engineering pairing? We found that a few hours of collaboration between a designer and an engineer can knock down so many small UI details that otherwise might linger at the bottom of the backlog due to low priority. Here is another example from Oscar and Roshan that paired together and worked on this PR um, ahead of our recent con config launch. Annotations and measurements are really useful features to clearly communicate design intent when you want to get to that pixel perfect level. Designers can add additional context, specs, and measurements to a design, and developers can easily see the designer's notes as they work, ensuring they don't miss any crucial detail. And compare changes in another really useful tool for those times when the de details really matter. You can compare changes to an older version in time. You can compare a detached instance to its original component, or you can compare any two frames you want on the canvas. Compare changes allows you to see the diff both visually, side by side, and in code to make sure all changes are captured and no, design, no detail is lost. And finally, Code Connect that I mentioned earlier is another important feature to mention when talking about quality and polish. When using Code Connect, DevMode will display real world code snippets from your design system uh, instead of auto generated code. Code Connect is especially useful when you have an existing design system and want to drive consistent and accurate use of it. And that's it. These were some examples for how design and development are running with it together, side by side, at Figma, from prototyping to polish. Embracing change, adapting quickly, sharing context, and working together are key to our team's success. It's what allows us to stay relevant, listen to our users, and quickly build features that solve their problems without getting paralyzed. And that's why, while personally I'm not much of a runner myself, I truly enjoy running with my team. Thank you.